Mobile World Congress, that means new phones, free antivirus picks, the Boogie Board, three great headphones under 100 bucks, and more. It's all coming up on Tech Thing. Tech Thing is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from the show and would like to support us directly, please consider contributing at patreon.com slash tech thing. Thanks. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we make technology behave. At least on the good days. <laughs> I was laughing. You started singing No More I Got to Mr. Roboto. And then I typed in sticks on Spotify. And once again, I love Spotify because I can hear a song. I don't necessarily want to own. I just, you know, this You whole just want to listen to it well, now and just, then. There's so much. It gets stuck in your head. <laughs> you kids today don't realize how good you have it with the streaming music and the online Seriously. iTunes, Google Play, If I had a song center. stuck in my head as a kiddo, that just lasted for days because you can't listen to it unless it was on the radio yeah. where you had the CD or tape. Yeah. <laughs> So hey, Mobile World Congress news. MWC is this big tech show aiming on mobile devices that happens every single year in Barcelona. Good old Spain. Now usually there is a few really big announcements that come out of the show, including this year. So first off, we have Samsung. They came out with the Galaxy S6 Edge, as well as the Galaxy S6. So they just announced both of these. They have amazing new high-res screens, but apparently no expandable memory or battery. Really? Yeah. So, kind of so Galaxy... You can't can't take off the back. So Samsung is going the iPhone 6 route. Apparently they are. Ew. I'm kind of disappointed on that. And yes. Sony announced this really nice looking slim mm -hmm. Xperia Z4 tablet. No phone, unfortunately, but the Z4 tablet was announced. Looks pretty cool. The rumor is that Sony may be walking away from the phone business. That was one of the things mm. that was floating around the internet in the last few weeks. Interesting. That, that they weren't making enough money and they may not want to be there anymore. I guess we'll see. And then Blackberry. Blackberry. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting. Apparently they are teasing using this brand new phone. It's uh, all touch on the front, but apparently it has a pull-out keyboard, because why not? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it, it, it's just a crazy thought. It's interesting. And well, then I can see where there's still, probably still a demand for a slide-out keyboard for a lot yes, of people. Yes, and I know some people who love their physical keyboard, so mm -hmm. this is going to be a big thing for them. They'll probably want to buy one. And last but not least, of course, uh, this is going to be huge for people who really like their memory, a 200 gigabyte micro SD card from SanDisk, because that's awesome. And some people just don't move their pictures off of their phones, so well, <laughs> they might want to use that. But it's also, it's like, for example, if you want to store a ton of video, if you're True. shooting a lot of photos, I mean, if you shoot a thousand photos in a week, that sounds ridiculous, but for some people it's normal. Some people do it. Or if you want to store like an entire season of a show you love or oh, your yeah. entire musical library. I love the idea of having like 128 gigabyte Sims, 200 gigabytes even better. Ah, so nice. But it's crazy, like 120 gigabyte micro SD sale, fifty nine dollars. I mean, we've, I was Ooh. amazed at how cheap. Even like SanDisk, 120 gigabyte micro. Yeah, they've gone down in price a ton. So this is pretty 80 exciting. Eighty bucks, ninety bucks, sixty three bucks. The downside is that. Um, unlike Compact Flash, your reader inside your phone has to be compatible with that size of yeah, disk. So if true. your phone only supports 32 gigabytes, you're going to use 32 gigabytes of this 128 gigabyte or 200 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. Yep, absolutely. So it's a thing. And that was MWC in a nutshell, pretty much. <laughs> I, I, well, actually, I have an iPhone 6, so it doesn't matter, <laughs> but I want 128 gigabyte compatibility with everything yes. in the future that runs micro SD. In fact, just make it 256. In fact, just make it 512. Matter of fact, just tell me about... This thing that only has <laughs> two gigabytes of exp memory on the inside of it? So I'm holding up a legal pad because right. this basically takes place of your legal pad. And it's about the same weight. It's called a boogie board. It's the boogie board 9.7 inch sink. So the reason why it's called a sink is because it's Bluetooth compatible. So you can sync it to your phone or you can plug it into your computer and read all the stuff that you save on it. I was laughing because you're like, oh, they sent me a boogie board. And I'm like, what's a boogie board? You're like, it's for capturing pictures and notes. And I was like, oh no, these things never work, except it works. And <laughs> it it's, works. And it's like 24 bucks. So actually this one's 80. Okay. $80. They do have other ones that don't have the sync compatibility mm -hmm. and those ones are really, really inexpensive. Okay. And they work the exact same way, they just don't sync. So the sync, so when they say they, they don't have the sync capability, that mean they, they don't talk to phones exactly. or You can still computers? save some stuff inside of it, but you would have to manually move it over okay. with, a, with a micro SD cable to your computer. So that's essentially a Bluetooth interface tablet yeah. thing for your phone so, or your tablet or yeah. your 
yeah. your, okay. So I would use this for sketches mm -hmm. and then save those as PDFs. Mm -hmm. And the PDFs are OCR compatible. Oh, so cool. if you have software in your computer that can do OCR, you can okay. just upload your PDFs to that and they'll read. And I would also use it for like our Monday meetings. I could write down all of our notes on here and then I could upload <laughs> all the meeting notes to Evernote. I, I, I'm still gonna type in the Monday meetings because you've <laughs> seen my handwriting. Well, my handwriting is <laughs> awesome. So they have this nice little software that you can install on your computer. Mm -hmm. It's called Boogie Board Sync software. They have Evernote compatibility built right in, and you can also search for everything once you plug this into your computer uh, straight through the button right here. Another interesting thing with this is when you plug it into your computer, you can click on this, and then you get this little draw pad. So if I'm drawing on my screen, and you'll notice it doesn't pick up my fingers, even though I have my fingers rubbing against it too at the same time. I can draw things on here like that, and it does it in live motion on my computer screen too. So is it so pressure cool. sensitive? I mean, if you press harder, do the lines it, get thicker? Or? They do, but it's really hard to notice it on the screen whenever okay. you create a PDF, but you can notice it whenever you're drawing on here. It's so funny, it's like an Etch-a-Sketch. It is kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. you're physically creating images on the tablet right now that are also being captured in the tablet and sent to your machine. And the last thing I can do, and I'll show you this too, if you right click on the little icon and go to digitizer mode, it turns it into a mouse. So as I move my little stylus pen that comes with it <laughs> around on my screen, I can use it as a mouse and I can do my right and left clicks like I would normally be able to. It's so weird. And I thought that was pretty cool, but I'm not sure I would use that right. like day to day. But pretty cool little extra thing. So it's kind of like a Wacom tablet. It's kind of like a capture device. It's kind of like yeah. a and you can and you can still with with that version just wander around and you know, take notes on oh, it randomly yeah. and then connect it to your computer later. Absolutely. So I could just write stuff on here and it doesn't have to be Bluetooth connected, but once I actually add the Bluetooth connectivity to my phone, I can just save it and upload it straight to a PDF. It's so, and... Pretty interesting. It's a cool device. It's pretty fun to okay, use. Okay, so, oh, whoops, I just erased the entire That's thing. That's okay. <laughs> is there, well, can I, can I erase like a line that I've drawn or something? No, you can't. So there is no way to erase just one line. You would have to erase the entire thing. It's the strangest thing because it's literally, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's such an Etch-a-Sketch kind of moment. This is why I type 80 words per minute. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, I have girl handwriting, so I can use it. Yeah. <laughs> it's but it's so like so it really is I, I gotta say I'm impressed. It I feels good. You can use it even if you are how to draw. If you're a lefty, you can <laughs> still use it because it doesn't pick up your your hand whenever right. you're rubbing against it, which is nice. The only thing I would recommend to the company is including a manual with the product itself. Because right. no manual is included except for like five steps to set it up. Uh, other than that, you need a little bit more help with downloading the manual online to figure out that there is an application for iOS and Android and there actually is a product download available on the website for your computer. Battery life? Uh, battery life is about five days and it takes about four hours to charge. So Do not too bad. Yeah. It's a fun you device. You seem very impressed. I am. Yeah. It's a pretty cool device and given I write a lot of mm -hmm. notes, it'd be nice to just simply upload them instead of having to type them into my computer. So I like that. I just type directly <laughs> into my computer because you've seen my hand. I know. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> Got a question for us? Askatechthing.com. Want to know what's going on over on Hack 5 this week? Well, guess what? Darren's back from Europe and he's going to tell you. Connecting Arduinos to the internet, reading RSS feeds with blinking lights, plus checking out experimental quadcopters from the London Aerospace folks from Hack Across Europe. It's going to be awesome. Check it out over at Hack 5. We're back and it's now time for a rapid fire round. This is where we'll try to answer three different questions, give three recommendations, or review three different products in less than one minute each. And this week we've got headphones for Chris, who wrote ask at techthing.com. I would love to see you guys review five or six pairs of headphones on air. I would really like for them to be under a hundred bucks. I would enjoy seeing your opinions on the subject. Are you ready, Patrick? Ready! Go! Great question, Chris. I have three headphones for you under $100 because I don't really have five on my list. First up, these, <laughs> the Monoprice 8323. 
Available at monoprice.com. If cost is your major object, or your teenagers, or your little tiny rugrats keep trashing headphones, the Monoprice 8323s, aka the premium hi fi DJ style over the ear pro headphone. What a name. $23.98. Very good sound, very crappy ear pads. Not the most comfortable, but they're very usable. Um, the cord is removable and replaceable, Ooh. which means it's really, really hard to kill. If you want to throw them in your backpack, they fold up like some of the more expensive brands we'll talk about in a moment. Um, you know, I gotta say overall for 24 bucks, uh, you, you could stumble these in the under $100, $80 headphone category. Yeah. Um, Interfidelity actually, uh, they've even made it to Interfidelity's wall of fame for sealed headphones. And CNS Steve Gutenberg raves about them. These are amazing headphones for the money, $23.98. Also bomb proof, the wire cutter's <laughs> best headphone for $150. Sony's MDR7506, which costs $75. A studio staple, they are very accurate. Clean high end, solid low end, lots of detail on stage. They fit just about everyone super comfortably. And if you're really, really close, you might notice these are the earlier version, the MDR V6s. I've owned these for over 20 years. The 7506s are the same burly construction. They will last forever. They fold up if you want to put them inside your backpack without them destroying. In theory, you might wear out the cord. Uh, I'm on my second set of head fans and the same cord and the same, they're just, they're here, feel them. They have heft. And they are super comfortable. If you have a big head or a little head, they seem to be able to fit you with no problem. Finally, <laughs> if you're through, Shannon. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Um, Grado's, uh, Grado Labs Prestige Series, the SR60E, the SR80E, these sell for about $75, $99 online. These are great entry-level audiophile uh, headphones, amazing presence and sound stage. That's what they're known for. If you have a really good recording where the instruments are kind of feeling there, these are the headphones that are going to deliver it for you. Gorgeous highs, especially cymbals and jazz and rock. Not as much bass as the Sony's, for example. Kind of drops off below 40 hertz, I'm told. They are open back, open headphones. That means you will hear the sounds around you and you're more likely to irritate folks in the office if you turn <laughs> your music up loud enough to damage your hearing. One last thought, by the way, uh, which I guess makes this uh, a top four list. People sell headphones on Craigslist and eBay all the time. I think for 30 to 50% less than the best retail price if they've been well maintained. These Sennheiser Momentums, I bought for $65 off of eBay. They sell for $250 new. Apparently they were broken. So I plugged in the other spare headphone cable that came in the box and they played fine. Caveat emptor, I was expecting to do some mad soldering and maybe replace one of the drivers to get them running. Uh, your mileage may vary because I could have very well spent $65 and gotten a hoop with two busted True. ear pads. I'm just saying. <laughs> Those but, are great ones. I can I can relate. They are. Yeah, these are a fantastic head. This yeah. is normally $250, $300 headphone, though. Yeah. It is amazing how good the Sony MDR 7506s are for 75 bucks. They are fantastic. That's why the wire love cutter it. and a lot of other people love them. That's why they're in so many studios where people record music professionally. Yep. I've seen them all living. over the place. They yeah, I've seen these the everywhere. Like all the studios. All the podcast studios. All the podcast studios. All the podcast studios. Do you have a question for us? It could be anything. You can tweet at TechThing or post on Facebook.com slash TechThing or you can email us, ask at TechThing.com and we'll do our best to answer it for you. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Then we'll share our favorite antivirus picks while I explain what? to Shannon that it's not that quiet out right now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> This episode of Tech Thing is brought to you by viewers like you. If you like this show, you want to keep it coming, do us a favor, donate to our Patreon at patreon.com slash tech thing. Donate a nickel, a dime, five dollars, a thousand dollars an episode. We're good. And that contribution basically helps Shannon and I feed ourselves, feed our children, feed our cats, keep roofs over our heads, health insurance, all that good stuff. And remember, if you can't donate, it's okay. Share the show with your friends, subscribe on YouTube or techthing.com, or just send us your questions for the show. Thank you so much for supporting Tech Thing. Rick writes in, greetings Pat and Shannon. Firstly, I've been a fan for quite some time, Pat especially since I started watching the screensavers at age 11 or 12. Thanks, dude. And now I'm almost as bald as you are. <laughs> bald buddies, yes! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what would be your current recommendation, free or paid, for security software? I'm running AVG 2015 and Malwarebytes Pro, but I've heard mixed feedback regarding AVG's effectiveness. Keep up the great work, forever a fan. Thanks, Rick. Dude. 
Thanks, Rick. Yes, thank um, you, Rick. So a vest would be my option. Mm -hmm. I recommend this one because it's the main option that a lot of my personal like internet tech people, my security and <laughs> hacker and forensics buddies use. People who do frightening things on the internet <laughs> use a vast. They that's, use that's a what vast, you're saying. Or they recommend it to okay. a lot of other like friends and family. So that's the one that I use personally. I've also used AVG a lot, and mm -hmm. both of those work out really well for me. PC Mag also recommended Avast uh, for one of their favorites for blocking malware as well. So they did testing across several different software options for antivirus, and they found similar results for malware blocking for Avast, and they rated this one called Panda Free Antivirus Panda. and Malware Bytes, of course, as one of their top scores. Now, I haven't tried Panda myself, but Malware Bytes is a really good one. I recommend that one as well. It's really awesome. It's really fun. I, I kind of find it amusing that just about every uh, antivirus review has a different editor's choice slash <laughs> top three, right? Um, it's, it's kind of funny. It's well, <laughs> you know, this is Tom's guide, and it's like, okay, so Bitdefender, Norton Security, Bitdefender, um, you know, they like Sophos on the Macs, uh, Neil over at, uh, at uh, PC Mag, Webroot Secure Anywhere, Bitdefender, Kapersky are his top three editor's choices, uh, Tech Radar, for example, 360 Total Security, which runs like four different, uh, it's slow because it runs like four different uh, scanners. Then they have Avast as their second, third is AVG Antivirus. A lot of people, if you think you're infested, really recommend running Surfrite, which is kind of oh, a, a yeah. Hitman Pro, which is a standalone, or they call it a second opinion malware scanner. Um, AV Test. Uh, it's just interesting. Like, they let you decide whether it's performance, protection, or usability. But yeah. it's kind of funny. I kind of look for the one that shows up in the top three in most of them. But the reality is is I generally run the free stuff from Microsoft, the Windows Defender. Really? Wow. Well, I'm usually pretty careful about where I browse. Yeah. Uh, and I'm usually pretty good about not clicking on things. That makes sense. You know, and once every six months I find myself on a website and I'm like, ah! And then I'm <laughs> downloading additional software to scan. Well, you are saying, a friend of yours was saying, like, you know, because I've done this where you, 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 okay, so Windows Defender doesn't see anything, so yeah. you turn it off, install another yes. antivirus, and then run that, and then uninstall that, and run a third antivirus. Yeah, just make sure you're not running all of them at the same time, because that can really screw up your yeah. computer. But you can download multiple different antivirus programs, stop one, run yeah. another one, and see if they pick up different viruses if you suspect that something's on your computer. Yeah, if you're really afraid that you've damaged your, your thing, pull the drive out of the computer, connect it remotely to a second <laughs> computer, and scan the drive yes. without actually having it boot up, because sometimes you'll find really ridiculous things that way. <laughs> And of course, along with that, we also got a tweet from Door to Door Geek. He said, I just say, give the Banana Pro a chance. Mine runs fantastic, lots of bells and whistles. So what is the Banana Pro? Okay, so so um, <laughs> Unnamed Gamer one tweeted at me, water cool the Raspi 2, or even better, liquid nitrogen cool it. Whoa. Make sure to overclock it <laughs> until it starts smoking. And I was like, no. And then Door to Door Geek, door -to -door Geek recommended uh, the Banana <laughs> Pie, right? It says it's lots of bells and whistles. So Banana Pie looks a lot like Raspberry Pi because it's essentially, it's a split. Like you might have a Linux operating system split. The Banana Pie people like the idea of the Raspberry Pi, but they wanted more. So they put a, a you know ARM Cortex A7 dual core CPU with Mali 400 MP2 GPU graphics on it. But the big thing that sets it apart for me is the fact that it's got an onboard microphone, a SATA connector, IR receiver, there's power and reset switches. None of those exist on the Raspberry Pi. Right. So the downside is that this isn't going to fit in a Raspberry Pi box. The upside is it should be compatible with all the Raspberry Pi software for the most part. I don't know if, I don't think it's going to be faster than the Raspberry Pi Model 2. Uh, I think the Raspberry Pi Model 2, especially if you can run multiple sort of cores mm -hmm. at your application, should be faster than this. But it's a really cool alternative, and I love the idea mm. that it has a SATA connector. I'd love to see a SATA connector on a Raspberry Pi. That would be awesome. That would be <laughs> awesome. Austin writes in, I have two, two Chromecasts in the house, one upstairs, one downstairs. I would like to see if there's a way to be able to stream my Google Play Music from my phone or my PC to both Chromecasts at the same time, or something like a Sonos, the only way to go if I want audio playing throughout the house. Thanks, Austin. Yes. Thank you, Austin. 
You do need a separate computer for each Chromecast mm -hmm. link if you want to play them at the same time. Otherwise, if you try to play two Chromecasts from one computer, yeah. one's going to turn off as soon as the other one is set in connected mode. Uh, but one thing that you can do that I figured out is mm -hmm. you can uh, you can use one standard computer and either a VM to connect to the second one, or you can use two Chrome browsers, which are logged in and separate accounts, to right. connect to two separate Chromecasts, because it's going to think it's two different computers. It will not be synced, though, unless right. you have some way of press and play in both browsers at the same exact time. So that might be an issue. I was really shocked about this because I was like, I couldn't believe you couldn't too. stream to multiple ones simultaneously. Yeah. And oddly enough, while Google doesn't sync audio to multiple Chromecasts, they did announce at CES Google Cast for audio, which is supported by speakers from Denon, Sony, and LG. Ah. And uh, so it's kind of funny, like, so if you want to stream Google Play and a bunch of other stuff to, or your Google Play music, there are Google Cast ready speakers. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, we mm. talked about this back around CES, yeah. you know, what, what Bluetooth speakers were three years ago when it was like, oh, it's the Shannon brand speaker, it's the Patrick <laughs> brand speaker, my dog has a brand of Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. This is the year where everybody realized that Sonos was making a lot of money, like last year they figured it out, so this year at CES, everybody oh, yeah. and their uncle and their cousins and their nephews and their subdivisions and their neighbor, like everybody by the end of this year is going to have some sort of you know, streaming music, home music, Sonos yeah. competitor system. And of course, if, yeah. if it's not just Google audio that you want to play, if you want to play other things like, right. I don't know, audio books from your iPhone or whatever, right. there are other options. You can do the Sonos, of course. You can do Bose players. Those Bose speakers do the same thing, so you can go to separate rooms. But what? Oh, so your, your Amazon pedestal, <laughs> your Amazon, what is that thing from Amazon? You and Ryan Shrout both have one. Oh. Oh, the the new the Echo thing. Yes, everyone but me has oh, an yeah, Echo. Oh yeah, I ordered one of those. It, it hasn't come up? in yet, not oh, yet. Okay. But I'll I'll bring it on the show when it does. Yeah. Um, another option is Cambridge Audio. So okay. if you do have an iPhone or some kind of thing that does AirPlay, Cambridge Audio allows you to use AirPlay to simultaneously stream to several different speakers at once. So that's pretty cool. They don't have to be within range of each other too. You can have them in separate rooms. Yeah, it's it's this is going to be messy. Like it's it, yeah. it's it's and also I want to see Sonos and Spotify work together much better. But that's a whole other conversation. Me too. And I'm sure somebody else out there will probably mention daisy chaining, but sometimes you have to have an actual cable, or they right. have to be connected within 30 feet on Bluetooth. So that's why I'm not mentioning that. So many options, such a fragmented market. What? Yeah, so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you are part of the show. There's like a zillion of you and two of us. So do us a favor. You got a tip, email us, post on our Facebook page. We want to hear from you because you all have a ton of great ideas. Yes, you do. Oh my goodness. And I think that about wraps up this episode. But of course, if you like it, you can also subscribe <laughs> over at techthing.com or youtube.com slash C slash techthing. And before we go, don't forget, back up your system, back up your phone and do it like three times and make sure to go do it right now. Because <laughs> it's important. It is important. And remember, once in a while, put down the phone, step away from the screen, close the laptop and do something analog. Like go on Google Maps, find the nearest park to your house yeah. and go take a walk. Find a park you've never been to. That's it a great idea. may be amazing. I just discovered one nearby. I'm really excited to check it out. It's called the Wave Garden. The Wave Garden. Sounds really cool, right? Yeah, where it is. I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on Tech Thing. The Wave Garden. Sorry, you were saying Paul? Arigato, Mr. Bato, Domo, 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 Arigato, I suddenly now, you know what? I bet Sticks is on Spotify. Be, thank you. <laughs> You're just like. <laughs> it's totally legit, man. I read about it on Reddit. For sure. Obviously, it's legit. Everyone needs a hobby, yo. <laughs> True. Can't judge. I coupon. on. Do you have a thingy? Ew, no, you put boogers on there. I haven't used this one yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like I can speak, except I can't. <laughs> These have a wave calliope over in San Francisco. I think it finally disintegrated. Ooh. But as the the swells worked on the bay, it would force oh, the air through the these pipes? tubes. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Oh, cool. I thought it got I trashed. I gotta go there too. Uh, let me grab a picture for you, really. Actually, you know, I'll send it to you.